So we hear at your place Adi from uh, uh, from Trench. Uh, for people who don't know what Trench is, uh, what is it? Trench um, is basically a startup that solves uh, the I've got nothing to wear issue. Let's call it. And basically, it makes uh, the fashion industry economical for consumers. Okay, and how do you do that? Um, so what we saw is basically that the need for wearing things that are not just uh, the, just look nice and flattering your body, but the need also to have things that are new all the time is very uh, high in our culture these days. And that makes us buy a lot more than we actually need, let's call it. And we end up just with lots of things in our closet which we are not using, but we're still keeping because we feel they still have value to us. Um, but we also always buy new things because we want the new things. So this is uh, the inefficiency that we are actually solving. And we decided to enable any fashion shopper to basically use, uh, instead of money to get new things, to use stuff that they're not wearing in order to get new things. So basically make your fashion items uh, a liquid asset, let's call it. Okay. So, and, and how did you get into the idea? Um, through the problem itself. I mean, I was, uh, I'm also, uh, I love fashion and it was one of my problems. I used to blame myself for always wanting more and more fashion and spending a lot of my salary on fashion uh, while I have gorgeous things that I just bought a month ago. And the minute I stopped blaming myself for wanting this, for this being uh, my need, I accepted it as a need and really understood that the problem is not that I want it, it is that I don't have an economical way to do it. So when I understood uh, the need and the problem, this, is, uh, this was the guideline to everything that came after that. And then you, then, you, then, you had, then you had to the idea, but how did you bring it into practice? Okay, so basically I knew that I wanted to, to, make, um, to make it efficient for everybody else. And of course, uh, the sharing economy uh, was the most intuitive approach, meaning if I have lots of really good things in my closet that are not used, and so does everybody else, then of course my problem could be another girl's solution and the, and the other way around. So that was very intuitive. Um, but what we really wanted to solve is how do we do it without opening our wallets and, uh, and putting more money out of it. So um, this is how I started basically, these were the questions and my answer was to start uh, a digital currency um, dedicated for fashion, meaning uh, a solution that enables you to use all the benefits of money without mm -hmm. actually putting money into the system. So let's say I want your jacket, for, for example, and your jacket uh, um, is, uh, is worth to you something which I don't know and now I need you to want my sweater as well. We need it to be in the same value and we need it to happen in the same time which is very rare. This is why regular um, swaps uh, are not scalable. Yep. Uh, and money allows you basically to decide the value, to, um, uh, to save up for later, to trade with anyone you want. And the digital currency gave the combination of both. So all the benefits, but without any downsides. And it also um, made it, um, made it uh, for, for you to be able not to, um, not to get like your value down from what it usually was. Like mm -hmm. yeah. If you sell it in second hand, then a lot of the value of the clothes is taken down because now it's second hand. So you usually would sell it for uh, Fifty percent. If you just sell it, it would be for a lot less. If you sell it through a platform, uh, and what Trench wanted to do is basically, when you do it for uh, the same idea, which is to get other fashion items, then the value does not decrease as a, at all. Yeah, yeah, cool. So, so, so people can buy uh, used clothes from each other, and they're using the the virtual uh, currency uh, that they call diamonds. Diamonds. <coughs> yes. To to pay. So 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 that way it's it's also much easier. So you also are earning diamonds uh, when you're selling your clothes, but how can you then start? Because can you also buy them? No, you can't. So if I want to start, how, uh, how We like can to I think about it as um, not buying and selling, but as upgrading. I think it's more intuitive to think about it this way. 
uh, and the um, uh, sorry your question was how do I how do you start how do I start you cannot buy the diamonds because the whole idea is basically to upgrade your closet so you do not uh, buy the diamonds because otherwise you can just go into other stores and spend your money See. this happened all the time it's it's great but we are trying to provide a solution to just that to enable you to do it without spending money yeah. so therefore you, you cannot uh, buy the diamonds and if you're interested in buying clothes you can use any other platform store in the world yeah, <laughs> that yeah. is not French <clears throat> And how did you start it? Uh, because in the end, uh, you, uh, you had the idea, uh, you had the vision also, the idea about the currency and everything around, but how did your really practical start? How did, how did you find uh, the right partners, but also how did you manage to get uh, the first demand and, and, and supply for your idea? Um, yeah, it, it was a long way to go, but it's also, you know, in order to get one thing, you have to get the other, and it just rolls like this. But it's also an <coughs> advantage, but because the minute you start to get it, it's like a loop and it just rolls. Yeah. It just this, it, it gets easier and easier, I think. Um, so at the beginning, when I had, I had the idea, I decided what the solution is. I decided uh, what I want for the solution. Like I decided it only has to be for quality items. Otherwise, I don't want to use it. I have to be able to find the stuff I like very easily. And after I defined all this, I was ready to go. And I knew I either need partners or uh, money or just to start growing it somehow. Mm -hmm. And I just tried to look in every direction. And eventually the best direction for me was I realized that just through business development, I can just raise uh, a pilot version. And I thought it was uh, very important because trench is something that is completely new. Uh, virtual currencies are something that is new. So I didn't know how girls would react to digital currency. Uh, I didn't know, I, I also had another uh, open questions in my head. Mm -hmm. So I decided before I do anything, I need to test it. And, <coughs> and, uh, so. and uh, uh, what were the most surprising responses of people? Because uh, you, you, then you have an idea in your head, and you think, okay, maybe it will work like this and this. But probably in practice, uh, it, will, it will work completely different. So what are your most valuable lessons learned and also your biggest surprises in, in the assumptions you made and how it worked in practice? So I'm happy to say my intuitions were very, very strong. So I wasn't too surprised. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, it basically provided something, a solution to a problem that didn't exist before. Because girls are using uh, eBay or like dedicated eBays for fashion. There are a few platforms that are doing that as well but it basically gives them some of the money back. It doesn't really allow them to just continuously upgrade their closet and enjoy an infinite one. So it, the, the response was tremendous. We had uh, our users spending 30 minutes a day on the platform, mm. trading three items per month for a user, for each user, so it's, it's a lot. And I think the more surprising things I learned from Trench uh, is not that it gives this solution, but the other values that it generates, which are intuitive, I guess, for sharing economies. But back then, I wasn't in the field yet. So basically, we saw that it also becomes a very, very sociable tool for, for our users. So they come because they want to get free clothes, basically. But they stay because they also get other things from it. Because they started making new friends in the city through it. Because unlike any other sharing uh, economy, in here, it's really a matter of taste. If I buy something from someone, it means I love her style, it, and it's, uh, it's like a signal that maybe yeah. we, we have other things that we share. So girls started to meet new friends through the platform. They started to host uh, fashion swap parties using Trench as a tool. And the most surprising part of it is that the most of them didn't do it only for their friends, but for all the Trench community, for everyone that wants to come. And it just shows how much faith people have. And I thought it's amazing. So it became really like a sociable tool uh, to cool. meet friends in the city and to throw parties. Um, and yes, just uh, and, and our response from our users, from our interviews that we did to them, like uh, when, when they say that it changed the way they shop clothes in general, also outside of Trench, uh, because every item is now a chain of future items and every item is, uh, is a liquid asset now. 
it yeah. changes the <coughs> whole way they look at fashion. Yes, yes. Uh, so when you're buying, uh, you also see it as a investment. Uh, uh, that's, that that also has to be the, the right quality. So you, so you can also then uh, 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 swap it with others. Uh, so the quality ha has to be good of the things you're buying. Yes, I think they're more thinking about themselves when they buy something, but they would be very uh, free to buy something that is expensive or good quality, but like crazy because they know they won't get stuck with it. Uh, and they know they're going to get bored of it after three times they're wearing it. But now they have the solution of replacing it and not losing its value. Yeah. So it also made them like dare a lot more. And they're yeah. following uh, uh, closet suffusers that they like their style and sometimes they'll try things that they never would have thought they would just because it belongs to, to a girl they like. Cool, and, and, uh, and, and the physical transactions, uh, like uh, when, uh, when I am buying with 10 uh, diamonds uh, uh, your sweater, um, how does the sweater come to me? It's geolocated based. So yeah. it's so. more immediate than deliveries basically. It's yeah. just going downstairs, meeting the person, taking the bag, going upstairs again. Okay, so it are quite some local connections you're making. Yeah, like yeah. a lot of other sharing economies, I think. Uh, and, and this is what I really like about sharing economies, and I really believe this is where the world is going to. At the beginning, when technology and the internet came to our lives, it made us communicate very well. Uh, and I think the next step is basically to allow each one of us, and it already is happening, and it's just going to get more and more like this, is to give us the ability to behave in our own surrounding better. Yeah. on our own geographic surrounding to get what we want a lot faster and really exploit what we have around us, learn about what we have around us. Yeah, cool. And, and, and about your business model, because people, they can't buy diamonds, so at what way do you make money? I prefer not to say on this interview right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's still a secret. <laughs> but I can say that for our users, the idea is to enable them uh, to spend their clothes and not spend uh, money. Mm -hmm. And this is also implemented in, in the future business model. Okay. So they cool. can know that if they're coming, then we're providing them exactly that. Okay, and, and, and about your, uh, your growth strategy, because uh, it's really a, a, a local business, or local business in the same from the, 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 the transactions they are local. So um, are you <coughs> starting city by city, or how do you pick up your, your, uh, the new places where you want to open? Hmm. Good question. So yeah, uh, just like any other sharing economy, growth is something that takes time. So what you do um, is basically you start in certain geographical areas um, and you start and you see that it's working and you tweak your strategy mm. a bit. And so the next time you go in, it's a lot faster and suddenly you know how to grow it. Then you do it in multiple places, but you also provide the users with tools to grow communities by themselves. Mm -hmm. That's the best way to do it. Some do it, some don't. There are some sharing economies that every city they come into, they open a branch, they build a team, a physical team that stays there. And there are some that really know how to work the community. It really depends on, um, on what your product is and your uh, personality of your company. Uh, but basically, if you give users enough tools to help you grow mm -hmm. the sharing economy themselves, um, then it just fills out, fills out with time. And do you also reward uh, 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 users who are starting uh, a trench uh, in their city? We had a, a few approaches, but since it was the pilot version, uh, we had to say no, but it gave us very, very good indication regarding what users are looking to do and how they're looking to take part because they ha also have needs that they want to be filled. Yeah, and, and uh, it's also the app open for everybody in the world, like uh, I'm living in Utrecht and uh, when I want to, to, to start a trench over there, uh, is, it, is it possible or do you really pick up the countries where you want to expand? Well, for current, uh, currently, if you want to open uh, your own branch, you'll have to write a through, through the website and we will talk to you because we uh, are a program that enables anyone to do it from everywhere uh, is something that we're not going to implement for, for the next few months. Uh, mm -hmm. So, if you are interested, you can address us through the website and we will discuss together and decide. Okay, cool. And, and <coughs> uh, you're now active in, 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 in Israel, but you also got some plans for, for other countries. So, what yes, are your, do. your <laughs> <laughs> big smile? <laughs> so, 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 what are your, uh, your next steps? 
Well, you'll have to wait and see. You'll have to keep following. <laughs> Can you say something about it? Uh, do you got some, uh, uh, some, uh, some countries in FAD or, or is it something you, you, you don't want to talk about? Sorry? Do you, do you got some countries in FAD in mind? Oh yes, we do, in okay. mind. <laughs> and what are your biggest challenges in, in, uh, uh, in, uh, in growing the platform? I think uh, the challenges are the challenges every sharing economy has, which is basically to grow a virtual product that is physical. Like for every uh, virtual transaction, there is a physical one happening in the real world. And that's very challenging because scalability is uh, like a whole different definition. You have to be scalable, meaning it has to be worthwhile. But it's not something that on your first day, millions of users can just download and start using. It just doesn't work this way. So I think like every other uh, sharing economy platform, it's all a lot about patience and understanding that these things are taking time to grow but really finding the keys that will enable, as I said, other users to grow communities around them. That's the jackpot, I think. And are you also looking for, for uh, partners in traditional organizations? So, so uh, we got to say, okay, we're going to add something at the existing fashion industry. Um, do you also want to work together uh, with uh, traditional uh, brands or whatever? Do, do you have ideas about that? I think uh, and that has to also do with my approach as a person. I think uh, in order to be very big, no matter what you do, you have to work with others and you have to give up on power and on owning things um, in order uh, to just be bigger. Um, and it's, it's funny, it also has to do a lot with the sharing economies and I think the whole world is going more into services and accessibility to things and not ownership um, therefore uh, regarding every partnership not just in the fashion industry but anything if it's something that can help both sides and both sides are benefiting then of course yeah yeah uh, so so the thing you are expecting from users you also to do it uh, yourself in practice and do you see because uh, uh, there are now uh, uh, many share economy platforms uh, uh, trying to, 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 to grow, uh, but many of them are really new in, in, in what they are uh, providing for their users, but in a way they are uh, organized themselves, uh, they are not this new. Uh, would you say, okay, I also want to have the same mindset as users I have, but uh, many platforms, they are not doing that. How, how do you look at the, the different platforms uh, uh, in the industry about uh, the way they are really um, having the same values uh, as they also expect from their customers? Well, I, I don't know because I don't really know the behind the scenes of other platforms. I don't know. I know what the companies are doing. I investigated and learned their strategy of growth. And I think the ones that are succeeding are doing exactly that, which is understanding that they have to give a lot of power to their users and not be centralized in order to grow. Yeah. So if you expect your users to trust each other uh, and give each other credit, you have to do it with your users. And if you don't empower your users, and it's not just in sharing economies, but in sharing economies, it's most important, then you're not, maybe you'll be strong, but you won't be big. Yeah. And eventually, if you want to be really strong, you have to share this power with uh, with everybody that is on your platform. So for us, basically, um, we see the users as the brands. We are just an umbrella or a, uh, just a tool uh, that enables them to become brands and to share their closets. Uh, and every girl has her own um, way of doing things, the way she uploads uh, her pictures, mm -hmm. how she does uh, take, uh, takes care of returns. And of course, we're, we're there to supervise, but our approach is basically, you decide how you want to manage this. Okay, cool. And, <clears throat> and what is your biggest dream for trends? So, so, when, so when will you be the most happiest woman in the world? <laughs> uh, uh, so what do you want to reach with it? I'm already very happy because I think this thing, this solution, with or without me would have come to the world at some point. Mm. It's just so needed. It's a problem every Western woman has. And I really do believe that this is uh, the best solution for it. And I'm just happy that 
I actually did it and started it and maybe I'll be the one that is really bringing it into the world and you know what I wish for trench is basically um, to provide the solution to the to the Western woman and really matter and make a change in the world enabling women to change their outfits and dress however they want to and dare and be bold uh, without having the economical weight yeah. on them. Yeah, cool. Okay, so thank you very much. I wish you all the best with that. Thank you very much. Thank you for much. the interview. And uh, also, uh, if anyone is looking for more information, we're ab available at uh, trenchapp.com. Okay, I will also put it uh, under the video. Great, thank you. Thank you so much.